Hi there everybody, this is Bruce and welcome to our sixth lesson in this series. Measurement is an essential part of studying and understanding science. A special system of measurement called the System International or SI is used to define every single quantity of measurement that we use in science. When it comes down to electrical quantities, there are many of these quantities that are available. But in this lesson, we are going to study specifically the measurement of electric current. Different measurement tools are used to measure different electrical quantities. The electrical energy meter on the side of your home keeps track of the amount of electrical energy delivered to your house. Electric companies charge customers for the amount of electrical energy used on a monthly basis. To ensure that the electric company charges the right amount for its energy, they read the energy meter in your home. Electrical energy is measured in kilowatt hours. Scientists and electricians want to measure electrical quantities other than electrical energy, such as current and voltage. For this purpose, they use a measuring device called an ammeter to measure the current and a voltmeter to measure the voltage or potential difference. Quite often, an electrician uses a device which can operate as both an ammeter and a voltmeter. It can even be used to measure the resistance of a circuit component. We call this handy multitasking measuring instrument a multimeter. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to measure an electric current using an ammeter and use the formula Q is equal to I times T. We already know that electric current is the rate of flow of charge through a conductor. But how do we measure these quantities? Well, charge is measured in coulombs and has a symbol capital C, while current is measured in amperes and has a symbol capital A. One coulomb is defined as the amount of charge that passes a point in a circuit when a steady current of one ampere is maintained for one second. This can be written as one coulomb equals one ampere multiplied by one second. Notice unit symbols are always written with a number value and are different to the symbols that define quantities. A coulomb is the amount of charge carried by 6,25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. 6,25 times 10 to the 18 is scientific notation for 6,25 million, million, million electrons. That is a lot of electrons moving past a given point in one second. Can you imagine trying to count all the electrons? Because we cannot count that fast and cannot even see these electrons, we use an instrument called an ammeter, which will assist us in measuring the flow of charge through a conductor. An ammeter will allow us to measure the amperes flowing through an electrical circuit. I will now demonstrate to you how an ammeter works. I will set up a simple electrical circuit. If you have a circuit board in your classroom, why don't you set up the circuit with me? Here is the circuit diagram. It shows a battery of three torch cells connected to a switch, two light bulbs in series, and an ammeter. Remember, right in the beginning of the lesson, I spoke about an instrument that scientists and electricians use called a multimeter. This is an example of a multimeter, and we are going to use it in the capacity to measure electric current. In other words, the multimeter will act as an ammeter in this experiment. Here is my multimeter, which is functioning as an ammeter in the electrical circuit. An ammeter is always connected in series in a circuit, so that all the current that you are trying to measure passes through the ammeter as well. Series means that there is only one path that charge can take between any two points in the circuit. So the ammeter measures the current that passes through the circuit elements, which are in series with it. The ammeter has a very low resistance to avoid any significant alteration of the current it measures. I'm now going to close the switch. We can see that the current is passing through 
because the light bulbs are glowing. Now let's take a reading on the ammeter. It is 0, 0,22 amperes. Let's write that down. So our ammeter reading is 0, 0,22 amperes. Now let's insert another ammeter into a different place in our series circuit. I'm now going to connect the second ammeter into the circuit. I will remove that connecting plate and connect the ammeter using these two crocodile clips into that position. Let me now push the second ammeter into frame. I will now close the switch and notice what happens to the reading on the ammeter. We can see that one of them is reading 0, 0,21 amperes and the other one is reading 0, 0,22 amperes. Isn't that interesting? Did you notice that the second reading on the ammeter was slightly smaller than the original reading that we obtained. What we have just seen is what is called an experimental error. And this slight error has occurred because of the different sensitivity of the second ammeter. This is perfectly acceptable in science, and often we can learn a great deal about these small scientific errors. However, what are we able to conclude from this experiment? Well, we are able to conclude that the current in a series circuit is the same at all points. Do you see that the ammeter is a very useful instrument and can be extremely helpful when we try to analyze what is happening in different circuits? Can you still remember what it means when the ammeter reads the current in amperes? This means that one ampere is equal to one coulomb per second. So in our demonstration, the ammeter reading was 0, 0,22 amperes. In other words, current I is equal to 0, 0,22 amperes. Or we can write it as 0, 0,22 coulombs per second. Remember that S to the minus 1 means per second. From the ammeter reading of 0, 0,22 amperes, we know that 0, 0,22 coulombs of charge pass through the conductor in one second. Now can you tell me how many coulombs of charge will pass through the conductor in three seconds? So in the first second, I will have 0, 0,22 coulombs passing through the conductor. In the second second, I will also have 0, 0,22 coulombs passing through, while in the third second, again, I will have 0, 0,22 coulombs passing through it, which gives me a total of 0, 0,66 coulombs if I add them up together. Therefore, the amount of charge that I've got will equal 0, 0,22 amperes, my current, multiplied by the time of 3 seconds to give me a total of 0, 0,66 coulombs. As you've just seen, I performed a small mathematical calculation to allow us to calculate the amount of charge passing through the conductor in three seconds. What I would like to do now is an investigation to show you how we set up a definition of the rate of flow of charge through a conductor in a mathematical format. Let me set up another circuit for you. Here is the circuit diagram. It shows a battery of three torch cells connected to a switch, connected in series to a resistor, and then to an ammeter. You can use a light bulb as a resistor, which is something that we will do when we connect up our circuit. If you have a circuit board in your classroom, try and set up the circuit in exactly the same way as I've just shown you on the circuit diagram. Right, here I've set up my electrical circuit. Here are my three torch cells in series, my switch, my resistor, which I'm using a light bulb as I explained earlier, and I will bring my ammeter into view. I will now close the switch so that we can take a reading. Notice the reading is 0, 0,31 amperes. Let us now write this down so we can refer to it easily. Our reading is 0, 0,31 amperes. Now what does this reading mean? It is the amount of charge, which I will call Q, 
that passed a specific point in one second. So here I am writing t for time equaling one second. So 0, 0,31 amperes means that a charge of 0, 0,31 coulombs passes a specific point in a circuit in one second. This means that electric current can be related to the charge Q and the time T by a simple equation. Let me show you how. So here I will write I is equal to Q divided by T. In other words, what we are saying is that current I is equal to the charge Q divided by the time T. So remember, I stands for the current, which is measured in amperes, Q stands for charge, which is measured in coulombs, and T stands for time, which is measured in seconds. So let's make sure that you understand this formula by using it in a calculation. How much current passes through a light bulb when 180 coulombs of charge passes through the bulb in 60 seconds? Well, first of all, we must write down our important values. Q, the amount of charge, is 180 coulombs, and T, the time taken, is 60 seconds. Let's now write down our equation. I is equal to Q, the charge, divided by T, the time. Let's substitute in the values. Q is 180 coulombs, and T is 60 seconds. 180 coulombs divided by 60 seconds gives us 3 coulombs per second. Now we know that the coulomb per second is the unit of current, which is the same as the ampere. Therefore, we can now write the answer as 3 amperes. I'm sure that you will all agree that that was not a particularly difficult problem. But let's now look at the formula again. You can see that we can use this formula to calculate I if we know the values of Q and T. But we can also calculate Q if we know the values of I and T. Let's see how we do this by looking at our next problem. And here is the question. How much charge passed through a light bulb in 2 seconds when the current is 2,5 amperes? Well, let's start by writing down our important information. Current I is equal to 2,5 amperes, and the time T is equal to 2 seconds. We write down our main formula, I is equal to Q divided by T, that is current is equal to charge divided by time. I now want to calculate Q, so let's make Q the subject of the formula. We multiply both sides by T, and we will get I times T, is equal to Q. Writing Q on the left hand side, Q is then equal to I times T. Substitute our values in and current of 2,5 amperes multiplied by time of 2 seconds will give us a charge of 5 coulombs. Thus we are saying that 5 coulombs of charge pass through the light bulb in 2 seconds when a current of 2,5 amperes was maintained in it. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on experimentation and problem solving. Please join me next time. Goodbye for now.